today is Jason here from Clean Energy Reviews and in this video we're going to do a review of five of the best professional solar charge controllers. Um, these are all rated 60 amps or higher and have a VOC of 150 volts up to 300 volts. So let's get into it. So I'll quickly run through the test rig we have set up. We have five solar DC isolators here so we can turn them on individually to each of the five units. We've got a Victron BMB shunt so we can verify all the readings from the different controllers. And the battery we're using is a Power Plus Energy Eco 48 volt battery. And we also have just an old 48 volt inverter that we're using as a load to maintain the battery voltage. So this is the solar array we're going to use for the review. Uh, these panels are the Phono Solar 315 watt split cell panels. So we'll just have a quick look at each of the charge controllers. Uh, first up is the TriStar MPPT60 from Morningstar Corporation. Uh, this has the add-on meter, the TSM2 display. It's a very simple display. It's a little bit clunky to use the menu, so luckily you can also program it with the MSView software. The TriStar just has a very large heatsink. It has no cooling fans and relies on passive cooling. But it's a very simple solid unit. And then next up we have the Midnight Classic. This is the 150. There's also a 200 volt and a 250 volt version. These have been around since about 2010 and they are definitely one of the most feature packed charge controllers on the market. This unit is able to be used with solar, wind and hydro systems using the different tracking algorithms it's also the only unit with inbuilt ground fault and arc fault detection, which is um, very handy, especially in the US with the strict regulations. It's a very unique looking unit and it has uh, a number of fans. There's one external fan which draws air through a side channel. It also has several internal fans as well. So the Midnight has the highest current rating of all the controllers. It has a maximum output of 96 amps and a VOC of 150 volts. It also has a hyper VOC function which enables the maximum VOC to be boosted up to 198 volts when connected to a 48 volt battery. The display is actually really quite good and easy to use. It was uh, extremely easy to set up as well. And so next we have the Coolmax SRX from AREL. This is Australian designed and manufactured and this is the newest of all the charge controllers which was released in 2019. So AREL has actually been around since 1985 and this company invented the MPPT. One of the biggest highlights of the Coolmax SRX is the colour touchscreen display. It's really easy to use and set up all the parameters. Easy to navigate. As you can see it's a very large unit and it has a huge heatsink in the back made from a large piece of extruded aluminium and it also has an inbuilt fan so this has a maximum VOC of 300 volts, which is the highest out of this group, and a 60 amp charge current. Next we have the good old Outback Power FlexMax 60. So this is the oldest of all the controllers. This was first released way back in 2006. It has stood the test of time and it's still one of the um, best performing and most reliable units out there. They have a simple display which is easy to use and uh, loads of settings and options. Um, and some very, uh, 
The Outback has a PV input limit of 3 kilowatts, which is a little lower than all the other units. That's possibly due to the relatively small uh, heatsink size. However, there is also the FM80 amp unit, which is uh, more powerful for larger solar arrays. And finally, we have the Victron Smart Solar 15060TR. This has a 150 volt maximum PV voltage and a 60 amp charge current. So out of all five, this is the only charge controller that doesn't have rear cable entry. Although there is an add-on cover you can purchase to cover the terminals and the cables. This controller obviously doesn't have a display, but that's an optional extra. However, it does have a very good Victron Connect Bluetooth app, which is definitely one of the best uh, interfaces of any charge controller. Okay, so let's kick off the first test. Um, I've zeroed the shunt, so we're reading zero watts. And first up is the TriStar. And we are reading 983 watts. And it's jumping around 1.42 kilowatts now, so it just took a little bit. Here we go, so 1.53 kilowatts on the display and 28 amps and 1.42 kilowatts. So there's a little bit of a discrepancy with the reading on the unit compared to the shunt. Um, so this is an older unit, so maybe there's a calibration issue. Midnight, next. And the midnight is showing 1421 watts. That was very quick. And 1.42 kilowatts on the shunt. So 1.4 2 or 1.43 26 amps and it's fluctuating a little and 1.42 now we'll go on the aerial and it's just starting up 10 amps, 15, it's ramping up quite quickly, 25 amps, so 1475 watts. But here we've got 1.41, it's, there we go, and the next one is the Outback. Oh, it's just waking up. One point four two, one point it's fluctuating. It looks like it's doing a wider voltage sweep. Uh, 26 amps and 1.42 kilowatts and we're getting 1.42 as well almost 1.43 so that's slightly higher than the others and the last one, the Victron, and I've got the app ready, so it's sweeping through the voltage, searching for the maximum power point. And it 
it's still sleeping. It's fluctuating quite a bit. It's, it's doing multiple sweeps through the PV voltage and now it's settled on 1486 which is slight, slightly different to the display 1.44, 1.43 Okay So the next test we'll do is a partial shading test and I'll show you what I've done on the solar array. So as you can see I have put a piece of board over one of the panels to reduce the current and it'll also affect the voltage of this string and since they're both in parallel we'll see how the controllers react to it. So let's kick off the partial shading test number one. And TriStar is first off the ranks, and it looks like it's already settled on 1235 watts, 22.8 amps, and the shunt is showing 1.15 kilowatts with 21.3 amps, so again a small discrepancy. About an, one and a half amps difference. Uh, it's actually sweeping around a bit now, but it's settled back on 1240, 21.3, 1.16. Okay, we'll check the midnight. Already sitting on 1162 watts, 21.3 amps. And 21.3 amps. 1170, slightly higher. 21.4. 21.3. Okay. And the next one is revving up. Twenty point two amps, twenty point eight on here, twenty point four, I'm saying eleven hundred and eighty four watts, it's twenty point nine. So again, it's undervaluing its output. And we'll check the outback. It's tracking. So 21.2, it's sweeping around, and 21.2, and it's saying 21.3 on the shunt. It's doing very well. It's one of the older units. 
company 1.2 and 1.16 and the last one the Victron Still sweeping. Oh, it's twenty, you know. Twenty one point five amps. 1200 watts Looks like that's performing the best with the partial shading so far